Eleanor was sitting on the other side of a table in the lounge, elegantly drinking tea. Just the sight of that made it seem like we were picking up where we left off, just four years ago. It was just... This was the orbital station and Eleanor was meant to be on Earth, right? Have I inconvenienced you? She asked this with a smile and I shook my head. Not at all, but you did surprise me. <laughs> Smiling, Eleanor slowly lowered her eyes and spoke while folding and fiddling with a teacup. Folding a teacup, that'd be interesting. It seems that Visa is the same as usual. Huh? Since earlier, I've been nothing but surprises. My head had been so full of thoughts about ABS with sudden reunion caused it to stop functioning properly. She'd have, she has apparently been very concerned about you. Well, that's... Huh. So, what amazing thing I'll be suing on the lunar surface this time. I've been observing you ever since you checked in. And we do have a look of someone who's exhausted both of their energy and their determination. Uh. When Anna asked me that with a trouble smile, I unconsciously stroked my cheek. Your face has always been an open book. Is that so? Four years ago, due to the emotional trauma caused by the events of Hagana and the Outer District, I had become unable to display any facial expression. Despite that, people like Raina have been able to read my face. Needless to say, Risa could do it too. Indeed. Feelings have been conveyed through things besides facial expressions, you know. Eleanor said that her eyes gazing into the distance as if reminiscing about four years ago. As I looked at her like that, I agreed with her sentiment silently. What about you, Eleanor? Did you come here because there was something on your mind? She probably wouldn't be able to say she had just gone off on a stroll, coming away here from a house in the middle of a European forest. Moreover, I was already going to impose on Eleanor's hospitality during my stay. Since originally most of the bigger investors of our investment fund were people introduced by Eleanor, or by people she introduced, going to meet me in person was one of my goals of my trip. From there, my ulterior motive was to gather these people and convince them to let me access official data that could help me find Hagana. That's why I'd come all right here. Upon hearing my words, Eleanor didn't look at me for a while. When she did again, she seemed to be angry despite her smile. I'm here to meet with a person I shared a big adventure with. Of course there's something on my mind. And that's... She truly is a beautiful girl. She'll make it whichever guy ends up with her very lucky. It includes, amongst other things, how you trampled on my feelings. As she said those words, she seemed to be utterly enjoying herself. Was it, I was just in a hurry to see you. Is that not reason enough? I had nothing to apply with what she just admitted with an embarrassed smile. Even if trampling on her feelings was a bit of an overstatement, it was true that I couldn't respond to those feelings. But it is also true that I have something on my mind. She said that before letting out a sigh. It was an unhurried and elegant to the utmost, but also seemingly coming from deep inside of her. Is it due to a change in your life? When I said this, Ellen looked up. She then let out a small giggle. That is sure an odd choice of words. Is that so? Yes, it is. Anyway, you're right. This is due to the changes in my life. When I called her, I had apparently just met with her fiancé. She had said the people most excited about this were the people around her. Knowing her though, she'd really probably rejected everything forcefully if she really was unhappy about the situation. I've been wondering whether moving forward as I am is really alright. And then I knew I'd had to see you at least once. Is the answer supposed to be written on my face? It was. I blinked a little and in a smile. Because, even though it has been four years since then, you're still the same as ever. You didn't even look up, look this tired when we were up against Avalon. So who are you up against this time, I wonder? Could it be Emerald? She sounded somewhat bewildered. But if, but if she was asking me why I was looking so dispirited, then she meant she wasn't just somewhat bewildered. In terms of scale, it surpasses even Emerald. Ah. Ella stared at me before asking, Really? I remember Marco's warning. I was definitely not the kind of investment I should be bragging about to people. Still, I replied, mocking my own inability to give up. Really? 
<sighs> I'm, Eleanor's bewilderment was evident on her face. She, le she leaned back in a chair with a thud. We were trying to prove Avalon's dishonesty. When we felt like we were about to hit a dead end, I'd said there were still things we could do, and suggested going to the ends of the lunar surface to check on their power generation. Right now, she looked even more bewildered than she had then. Then, as if remembering something, Eleanor laughed and before slapping her knees with both hands like a little girl. Ah, it feels like a weight would lift up my mind all of a sudden. May I ask what you mean by that? Do you want me to say I got rid of my lingering affection towards you? Eleanor said with her eyes narrowed and mischievous. Smile on her lips. Eleanor had managed to stay true to herself despite the millions or even billions of moths flying about. It was no mere, mere lady. Before her eyes, which could see through all my inexperience, all I could do was just shrink back. I thought if I saw you, it might bring back a little bit of my t old tomboyish spark. She then added, I may have been lying a bit when I said I was afraid of my life changing. Lying, huh? Yes. What actually scares me with the changes happening within myself. That's... I thought about it, but couldn't understand. I couldn't fathom the intentions of one who would come all the way here just to see me. I felt like I was being awfully insensitive, and I felt like running away. Upon seeing me like that, Eleanor seemed somewhat flustered as she spoke. I beg your pardon, I was behaving like a small child. When I turned to look at her, Eleanor was straightening her back, as if she was about to begin some sort of voice training. I then realised Eleanor herself may be feeling conflicted about something. A truth be told, when I borrowed your strength to chase after Avalon, I was already at my limit. Huh? I blurted out that like an idiot. Rats, well, well, sort of. Seeing her gulping down on these medicines and displaying a fixation bordering on insanity, I was aware that she certainly was getting close to a limit both physically and mentally. But why would she bring this up now? As I looked at her in confusion, Eleanor shook her head. I was not close to a limit. I'd already reached it long ago. I was just incapable of kneeling down. Maybe it was vanity, pride, or just me refusing to let my efforts go to waste. She spoke in a small voice. Her eyes fixated on a teacup in her hand. Which is why I can't really say that I've brought down Avalon in cooperation with you. That'd be somewhat arrogant of me. That's not. It is. The only reason why I managed to carry on until the end was because you took me by the hand. I could no longer walk on my own. She then turned her eyes towards a huge window pane. Seems that long, as long as the hotel wasn't too cheap, it was guaranteed to have windows from which you could see either the earth or the moon. I thought these were my limits, both physically and mentally, but I was mistaken. It was just the progressive disappearance of that fiery passion I used to have, back when I was a foul-mouthed tomboy. You mean, when you were super conceited? Jeez, how? She seemed slightly mad at me when she turned to me, but after that she laughed. Yes, when I was super conceited. You didn't take any baths, you always ate me, you always one-handed. I just let my hair grow as it pleased. I was wearing sleepwear throughout my day. My bed was never made, and covered in books and trash. I was also starting to grow a moustache, you know. Looking, to her, looking, looking at her now impeccable appearance, it seemed impossible to picture her like that. But I could. That's because I'd also been there. My first revenge and my will to pursue them no matter what was, as per Schweitzer family motto, Justice and Lord. The flame of those fiery feelings seemed to grow weaker as the days went by. In a way I was scared, that flame had been burning brightly in spite of everything. It was starting to fade away on its own for some reason. I never said that, placing a hand on her chest. I kind of understood that. It was what most people refer to as becoming an adult. It was replaced by reason, which had gradually started to go in my thoughts. I thought it things like, for such or such reasons, I cannot give up. I must not give up, or I must keep going. There's only one so much you can accomplish by relying on reason alone. That was when I met you, quiet, and with plenty of fuel left. That fuel rekindled the fire within me. The imagery of a fire being rekindled was so fitting that I couldn't laugh. 
Somehow it almost seemed like it was a plan in advance. <laughs> and just like that, I was dragged along with you after... After you like you were... Dragged along after you... Not dragged along after you like you were some sort of fireball. And I managed to reach my goal somehow. Upon saying that, Eleanor looked up at me. She was talking about a time right after the fire lit by the defeat of Avalon. After involving Zeneca, revealing Avalon's fraud and starting sp spreading to society. Having been rewarded for her efforts, so to speak, Eleanor began preparing for a return to Earth. At the time, I had wondered if that was because people with aristocratic upbringings like herself considered expressing one's feelings openly to be unrefined. However, I remember not being too surprised with the expression she had on her face when she parted at a spaceport. Expression of utter accomplishment. I got it now. Had you run out of steam? In my words, and I nodded a little. I had realised I'd have become an adult, which is why I confess my feelings for you. With those words, she turned to look me with a decidedly mischievous look in her eyes. Since I was in no position to argue back, I resigned myself to holding her malicious gaze. I think that must have been my last resistance. Resistance? Because if I stayed by your side, I might have continued to burn. Bird now turned her down, and Eleanor had given up. And now we were once again having discussion of that kind of place. I think I was probably still being immature back then. But it was also because you were quite appealing, of course. It was an odd way of putting it, but I actually liked it. However, looking at you going from the entrance to a front desk, I've been wandering about, I realised I'd been right in deciding to go back to Earth. I didn't know whether or not she was doing that on purpose, but Eleanor kept getting sidetracked. It was probably on purpose. After all, Eleanor was a proud young lady. You still have something we need to pursue, something that you did not manage to reach, even by defeating an entity like Avalon. You might think this is normal, but actually it is not. But, well, I do feel like that place was a gathering spot for people like you. People chasing after incomplete endeavours. Or else, people who are not satisfied to go through with what I've decided to do. I had nothing to say to that. I just, I just watched her intently as she continued to speak. Which is why I'm glad I chose not to allow myself to be seen as some pitiful human staying on the moon. And instead decided to help you out. Huh? To help me out? I replied without thinking. And then I opened her eyes and looked left and right as she dropped something important nearby before finally staring at me fixedly. As I was looking at her go, I tried to understand what I'd said wrong. Bringing Avalon down had been no mean feat, going to court, testifying in front of Parliament, and dealing with media had made for a particularly new murderous schedule. On more than a couple of occasions, I had resented it enough for not staying and taking even just a small share of her workload. But even so, she had helped me out. When? In what way? I was generally puzzled, and Eleanor looked at me again. She now seemed almost on the verge of tears when she spoke. How? Yes? Are you really as clueless about anything that isn't investments? She was much more girlish than four years ago. I still small, still much more beautiful as well. I remembered Eleanor telling me about how Le Goff felt ill for days after arriving on the lunar surface and seeing her in her still super seated state. As long as she had a well kept appearance, I was sure she could be mistaken for an angel or fairy. I was pondering that, I nodded like a prisoner being told with sentence. I have been told that a lot. <sighs> Eleanor put a hand on her forehead, closing her eyes tightly in dismay. She looked like she wanted to ask what had been on the point of her solitude, solicitude over the last four years. However, I really had no idea what it was. Out of time, Eleanor not let out a, not, had left not out of gallantry, but helped me out. I was about to ask her for some clarification. Eleanor glared at me with a hand against her forehead and her head tilted down. I sat up straight without thinking. That was a once-in-a-lifetime solicitude graciously bestowed on you by Eleanor Schweitzer. Uh, well, well, thank you very much. Gosh. 
Well, I figured as much. Yes, that was to be expected. After all, it is the main purpose of your trip. Uh. Ella shut my open mouth with a sharp look. She went inside, sounding suddenly exhausted, and looked to her side brutally as she spoke. I just thought the more you appeared in the media, the higher the odds of her Ghana seeing you were. Ah. Because this was a broadcast everywhere, you were on Earth. People on Earth have a love-hate relationship with the lunar surface. So they were loving the whole Avalon thing. My country in particular celebrated it. Please prepare yourself before entering it. You'll be treated as a national guest. Avalon was about the same scale as that of a small country. On the surface, the scale of the company is also represented by the size of its greed. Ellen's company was crushed by that greed, its reputation was injured. It was finally retrieved its honour after Avalon's schemes were exposed. I've been so preoccupied by the matter that I truly hadn't thought about it. In the business world on the lunar surface, everyone knew about me. After all, you were a person involved in the revelation to return to Earth, leaving me with no choice but to deal with the aftermath by myself. And here I was thinking of telling my future grandchildren about how their granny had secretly helped a romance blossom. From your point of view, that might not be such a bad deal. I realised that regardless of whether or not I answered, regardless of what I said, it wouldn't be good. I was absolutely appalled by the extent of my own stupidity. I was so focused on the world of investments that I sometimes fell into traps I just hadn't noticed. I just kept on being deceived by things I didn't even notice. But if nothing else, I'm relieved. As I thought, you were an earnest to the utmost. It's true. You are earnest to the utmost, unlike me who was only passionate for a while. You are most likely the type of person who would love someone from the bottom of their heart. I'd really appreciate it if you went a little easier on me. As I was squirming in my chair, Ellen just said firmly, I won't. That amount of retaliation is only fair. As I was reflecting on how she had a point, Ellen unexpectedly smiled softly before going on. I think that is one of the good things about you. You took me a long route to the ends of the lunar surface. You made me look at out of space, even though I was scared. And you turned a deaf ear to my pessimism. Indeed. I got to witness that on several occasions. If someone like me were to the receiving end of your feedings, then that would be too intense for me. I'd we'll probably end up taking refuge in my bathtub. Now satisfied with defeating Avalon, you are also successfully managing an investment fund and now have plenty of money, right? Despite that, you're still devoting yourself to investments to a point of wearing yourself out. Are you not? Despite having more than enough on your plate, you still haven't forgot about your love from eight years ago. In front of such sincerity, my petty tricks simply cannot compare. Even my younger, super conceited self would have had trouble co keeping up. Despite a sweet smile, Eleanor still gave off a feeling of being on the verge of tears as she spoke. How? Please keep moving forward. I will be rooting for you from Earth. In that instant, I felt as if Eleanor had become an awfully distant existence. And yet, there was also some sort of warm-hearted connection between the two of us. With that, I realised Eleanor had become a person of a past to me. She became a person in my memories. And Eleanor had probably come to the same conclusion herself. It was a rectitude appropriate for the 29th head of the Schweitzer family. Well, with that being said... She carried her hands in front of her as she was about to clap. We went spoke, not with a fine and noble air she did just moments ago, but her eyes literally sparkling. Now, how about you tell me in detail about the earnest love of yours? Lucky for you, we have plenty of time, you know. Oh, this should be fun. And then learning about the girl who crushed her heart. But to be fair, how can you say no to that face? Bye-bye.